Hello everyone, this is Winter here at Sonic Academy and welcome back to another tech tip. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to take an unusual audio sample and make it into a playable melodic instrument. So sometimes whenever you're making or recording audio, there's unwanted things in the background of those recordings. Like for me, it's usually some sort of air conditioning fan humming away at the background of everything. So for this tip, let's take that unwanted sound, the air conditioning fan, and turn it into something interesting. So what we'll do first is I'll play you this sample, which is just of me recording a candy bar wrapper originally that I wanted to layer on top of another bass sound. And then we're going to change the fan that's in the background of this sample that we could turn into a playable melodic instrument. And that just sounds like this. And this sound also sounds really nice whenever you play chords with it as well. So to start, let's navigate over to Ableton Live's Instruments panel and pull in an instance of the Simpler device. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag in a copy of this audio sample from this fan loop. So I'll just drag this from my desktop. So let's open up the finder and then we'll drag in the sample. And I'll make sure to include this sample as well in a download link with the course so you can follow along step by step if you would like. So the first thing we want to do is find the pitch of this air conditioning sound that's in the background of a recording. If we zoom into the original sample down in the sequencer, and we play back in this section right here with the silence. You can really hear that air conditioning fan in the background. So what we want to do is figure out what pitch this sound is so that we can play it back in key with our projects. So let's go ahead and just loop this section of audio. And then we're going to go over to the audio effects then go down to the spectrum effect. We can just drop that onto our master channel. We can open it up to get the full screen view. And then we're going to loop that section of audio and we're going to see where the fundamental frequency of this sound is. And we can see it's this peak right here. And if we look down at this section of the spectrum analyzer, it'll tell us exactly what note this frequency is at. And you can see that it's at A2 is what that frequency is. So now whenever we load this into our sampler, which we have over here on this channel, we're going to go ahead and adjust the sample controls panel and transpose this up by three semitones because the root node is an A. So we'll go up three semitones to get to that. Then now whenever I play back the sample on our keyboard, everything will be in the proper pitches. It's also really quiet right now as well. So let's go ahead and crank that volume up to uh, about 25 decibels to be okay. So now it's a little bit better when I right press a key. So it's a bit more of a workable volume. And then we can actually open up this main sample window here so we get a bit bigger of a sample display. And then we're going to go ahead and isolate a section of the sound that just has our noise. So something about like that. And then we also want to loop a section of this audio as well so we have a nice sustained tone. So turn on the loop mode, go to the loop length here and make an adjustment to uh, just about 46.9 will be fine. We want to increase the crossfade to about 51. And then now whenever I press and hold a key on my keyboard, it sounds like this. So it gives us this nice oscillating tone that we can actually begin to work with. Another cool thing that you can do with this sound as well is you can change the start position. So if we want to pull it over to somewhere that's a little bit more textured, we could do that and it would change the tone of our whole sound. So this is a cool way to change up the entire character of our sound if we want to. But for now, we can just keep it where we had it. So the next thing that I want to do is go ahead and make an adjustment and cut out some of those high frequencies because the sample has a lot of high frequency content. We can put that at just about 9,000 kilohertz. And then over in the 
amp envelope section. Let's go ahead and turn up our release to um, something about 3, 3.2 will be fine. Maybe just bump that up just a little bit. But that'll give us more of a pluck sound. So whenever I release the key, it sounds like this. So that gives us a little bit more of a bell texture to work with. Now what we can also do as well is add a small pitch modulation to the beginning of our sound. What this will do is give us a little bit more attack. It'll give us more of a, a tense and give us more of a starting transient at the beginning of our sound, which will make it sound a little bit more like a pluck. We can go ahead and move over to this amount slider. And let's do plus 24. So now whenever I press a key on my keyboard, it's gonna have this almost laser-like effect. And what we want to do now is go to the decay setting and bring that down to something quite a bit shorter. About 10 milliseconds will be fine. And basically what you want to do is adjust this until you get a nice pluck sound, but one that doesn't sound too much like a laser effect. And actually we can go ahead and try this at 48 semitones to see what that sounds like. I actually like the sound of that a little bit better, so we'll just push that to something about there. And then so far, our sound sounds like this. And there's also quite a bit of low-end frequencies that we don't want in this sound because it's not bass. So let's go ahead and adjust some of those. So let's pull in an instance of the EQ8. And then let's just change this first band to a high pass filter. And we'll bring that to just about uh, 147 will be fine. So this is before. And this is after. So it just kind of helps clean the whole sound up. And then the last thing that we want to do is add a little bit of reverb to give our sound a sense of space. So let's go ahead and pull in Ableton stock reverb. We can put the density all the way up so we have a really nice dense sounding reverb. We can bring that dry wet down to something about uh, 43 will be fine. Let's put the stereo all the way up so we have a nice wide sound. Um, then we can go ahead and play that back and see what it sounds like. And that's a completed sampler patch. So it's actually really simple. We're basically just taking this fan sound that we have in the background of this recording, turning that into a sort of audio oscillator in the sampler, adding a little bit of pitch envelope just so it has a little bit more attack, and then just adding some effects to kind of round things out. As I said earlier, if you want to change the overall characteristics of your sound, you can take these loop indicators and change the position of them, and you'll get different sorts of sounds out of this pluck. So you could do something maybe like this. So now in the second half of the sound, when it begins looping, you hear that candy bar wrapper texture sound on top of everything, which just kind of changes up the overall sound. And just to take a quick look at the notes that I had in my introduction as well, um, which just to remind you, it sounded like this. These notes had three different sections to them. They had this top line melody that's going from a D to an E in the fourth octave and then back down to a C. And then we have this arpeggio section that's just an ascending pattern. So it goes D, G, D, down to A, and then just repeats that several times. Um, and it has a little variation at the end as well. And then I have this lower note. Again, it's a D note, the same root note going on here. And that's just kind of adding a little bit of a sub bass element. And in this case, where we have the sample patch loaded up, it's adding in that kind of low end watery sound. So without that root note, it would sound like this. And if I wanted to change how that sounded, I could always take this, adjust it, and replay it. And it gives us a totally different sound. So I hope you enjoyed this tip. While working on your productions, be sure to be on the lookout for interesting sounds that are in the background of your recordings or audio material that may have a pitched element to them. 
because you never know what sort of interesting sampled sounds you can come up with by reusing your audio material in different ways. Thanks, and I'll see you in another video soon. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.